Oh, absolutely. No, no, that that that's spot on. It's a, it, it's a rubber. One of my problems, and I, I'm sure you share this concern as well, is what we're doing sort of in the name of climate change. A, there's just zero chance we're going to get to net zero or remotely close to it by 2050. There's just we don't have the technologies or things to do it. It's a giant money suck for for wealthy companies are going to get all sorts of crazy subsidies to do things for that. But it's not going to meaningfully change greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. We really need better energy technologies and a different energy system to do that. The other thing is the policies we're driving are not really about decarbonization. In the U.S., we've got the best data. Over 60 percent of the of the relatively large, relatively large reduction in U.S. greenhouse gas emissions comes from one source. It's just natural gas displacing coal in the electricity sector. That's over 60 percent of the reduction in U.S. greenhouse gas emissions on a per capita basis to lower than any year that I was born. So, look, that's the needle mover we have today. But is there a push to, to get more natural gas production and drive that to displace coal around the world? Absolutely not. We've had slow boating on, on natural gas export terminals, restrictions on permits. You can't build more natural gas pipelines out of these things. Things that we know can drive down greenhouse gas emissions, those aren't popular. Nuclear, right? That's the other potential big needle mover is to drive more of our electricity from nuclear. No, that's not embraced. That's not, that, that's not pushed. It's wind and solar, which are not meaningful drivers of decarbonization just because their energy is diffuse. It takes a lot of land, a lot of materials, a lot of energy to build them. And then they produce a relatively low value intermittent electricity source. The other big, and I'll show up, the other big source of so-called climate efforts, both in the federal and the state level, is electric cars. Like these are even crazier. Volkswagen's published good data on this as a number of, of has as well. It's way more energy intensive to make an electric vehicle than to make an internal combustion car. You've got to drive it 70 or 80,000 miles just to get to break even, just to not have more greenhouse gas emissions from an electric vehicle than an internal combustion engine. Have you ever seen an electric car with 80,000 miles on it? I, I haven't. I'm sure we'll get to some. But really what they're doing is just displacing gasoline demand into diesel demand. Diesel is what powers mining and the ships that transport the stuff around the world to China to be processed over here. It's, it's substituting gasoline demand into coal demand, which is what powers a lot of the industry in China and Asia where these things are made. And it's pushing into natural gas demand, which is by far the biggest source of electricity in the United States and the second biggest source of electricity globally after coal. So you're not reducing hydrocarbon consumption with electric vehicles. You're just moving around which hydrocarbons go into that. But yet it's endlessly promoted and subsidized for climate reasons. Like the math just doesn't support that. 